time. You know there are two approaches to deal with life. There is the traditional approach of avoiding things, avoiding disease. In contrast, I want to show the approach, the health model, that by the disease model of avoiding disease, instead we could help people flourish. There's the approach of, what am I bad at? How can I fix it? Or you could say, what am I good at? How can I focus on my strength and duplicate them, use them more? There's the approach of running away from pain, from fear, from worry, running away. Or the approach, the healthy approach of seeking happiness, seeking excitement, seeking fun in life. You know, you could do the same activity in two different ways. You could go to work and feel all bummed out about it. You know, work again, waking up, getting up, you know, the same old one thing. And you could do the same activity, same action, in a different approach. Yay, I'm up. It's morning. It's a new day. I'll smile today, and I can make a difference. It's the same activity, but different approaches. What approach would you use? It's not living just to survive, you know? It's, it's going up and learning all the time. There's no, there's no ceiling. It's, it's always getting stronger and always develop. Develop. The approach of development is not only to get to, to this happy point. It is to get there. But when you're stronger, it also helps you confront and deal with also, with also the low point. And that's what it's about too. It's getting better and experiencing the hardships in a better way. You know, we do that all the time. We really do that all the time. Traditional thinking defines health as the absence of sickness. Think about it. You're not sick, so you're okay. The healthy way, the um, positive, realistic psychology, explains that disease is really an absence of health. You weren't healthy enough, you weren't strong, so a disease came over you. In emotional terms, you weren't happy enough, enough. you didn't have enough good things in your life happening, you didn't focus on enough good, that depression fell on you, happened to you, you know, or anxiety. Abraham Maslow from Brandeis University explains in his research on neurosis and defines it, defines neurosis as the failure of personal growth, the failure of what one could have become, one's potential, the narrowing of the world, of one's world, you know, seeing only one hardship, capacity inhibited. Marty Seligman, a top at the University of Pennsylvania researcher, explained how do we, he asked how do we help prevent crime in society, drug abuse, third world, etc. A lot of research was done many, many times on on these specific phenomena, and we didn't see that it actually helped. In fact, we see more and more hard things in the world. Because we ask these questions, we focus partially, partially. We focus on, on the disease, we focus on, on the disease, and whatever, whatever it was, we see more of it. We focus more on something. It's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy, so we see it more happening, and we spoke about it earlier. We need a health model, he explained. We've seen that learning optimism 
prevents depression and anxiety in children and adults. The best way to deal with schizophrenia, neurosis, psychosis is to develop self-esteem, courage, faith, interpersonal skills, optimism. See, it's not that if you learn positive psychology or just use the health model, you won't experience any hard emotions. In fact, the only two people that don't experience hard emotions are psychopaths and dead people. So, if you're feeling hard emotions, it just means you're not one of these two. It's natural, and that's human nature to experience hard emotions and ups and downs with time. We all do. But think about a healthy, a strong immune system. A person who... Everyone really experiences disease. But people with strong immune systems experience disease less. And when they do, they recover faster. And that's what it's about. Research shows that, points out that you could really craft this positive approach. You could really change the neuron, the cells in your brain. If you practice, you know, over and over one approach. And it could really, it could really be changed. So I would like you to take this homework for this short session and just practice. Take three times today. Three times that you find yourself in a hard situation, a uh, hard thought, and and decide to practice. Practice this time just for the practice. How can I actually think? You know, just to practice, fake it even. Practice thinking about it in a good way. I hope it won't only be fake, but it's possible. It's possible, and I wish you success and happiness. In the next short session, I will show a very interesting article, a very interesting experiment done with it.